the CV. Uh, I don't think I will do justice to you, but uh, I try to uh, recap some of uh, uh, Mr. Ong's experience. He's previously, he was head of the intellectual property of CV. Uh, he is a registered uh, pattern, trademark, and industrial design agent, and specialized in biotechnology, chemistry, microbiology, pharmacology inventions. Mr. Ong is also commissioner of Earth, the High Court from Malaya. Mr. Ong serves as an IP consultant to the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation mostly. He is a member of the Technical Working Group on, on SME program under the Ministry of International Trade and Industries, Malaysia. He is also a member of the Technical Working Group on the Intellectual Property in the field of Information and Communication Technology. Mr. Ong was also appointed by the Ministry mostly as a technical expert for the Science Fund Evaluation Committee, the Techno Fund Evaluation Committee, the Community Innovation Fund Evaluation Committee, and the Enterprise Innovation Fund Evaluation Committee. Uh, Mr. Ong is a regular speaker and trainer at both local and overseas intellectual property seminar. He conducted training workshop on intellectual property lessening for the World Association of Industrial Technological Research Organization Retro in Bali and also a similar program in Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago. He is also the, presented the many international papers. Uh, Mr. Ong has written widely in areas of intellectual property and uh, he is a member of Invention and Design Society, Mines, and Malaysian Intellectual Property Association, MIPA. He is also an expert exco member as the committee of mines from 1993 to 1996. Mr. Ong is now senior principal consultant, Sirim Berhan. With such an outstanding expert, uh, I try, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Ong to present the case. Thank you. Yeah. 
if I have the idea how to convert gold into, uh, into what I call this, uh, what I call it, I convert iron into gold, that I become very rich, but how can I do it, okay, for example, and how can I perfect this idea? And uh, of course, uh, one of the first steps towards commercialization is that many people advocate that the first thing you need to do is to protect your idea using a patent system. And um, one of the main issues raised again is that the question of money. Because to patent something will cost you a fortune, yes, to protect something in Malaysia will cost you something like 10 to 15,000 ringgit. And if you want to venture further in other countries, it will cost you even more money. Okay? Um, so, therefore, protecting something uh, using the patent law could be prohibitively quite uh, impossible for many people, especially those who are not uh, being given a lot of funding by the university or they don't have funding from any other sources. Okay? Now, second thing is that the question of uh, uh, commercialization, is that how or what are you going to commercialize? Every year we see uh, universities, research institutions taking part in various uh, expo. For example, we have the Indonesian Technology Expo, normally held in the month of February. Then this coming May, we have the ITEX held, uh, 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 organized by MINDS. And then somewhere in the month of September, we have the Bio Malaysia organized by Mosti. And of course, the last one, we have the NICE uh, exhibition in the month of November organized by Mosti. And we see many people getting gold medals, silver medals, and so on and so forth. And the person asks how many of these inventions are actually being commercialized. So the issue of commercialization is something, a very big question now, because uh, as what Dr. Cody, my colleague, had mentioned, the KPI is how much money can you bring in from that invention. And when you cannot bring in the money, then you have your hit, that is something like that, okay? Uh, and then you have all these things in the problem. Now, the other thing is about social responsibility, which Dr. Colley had mentioned. The question is that, is it right to patent something and bring it into your property when the money is provided by the public funds? So, again, there is a two school of thought. Some say, yes, uh, you have to protect your invention so that other people don't uh, take it away from you without permission. On the other hand, there are people who say that you should actually give back to the society because the money comes from the taxpayer and so on and so forth. But putting that aside, uh, come to the issue of commercialization, how should we go, com how to go about commercial something? Now, um, my experience working in Syrian, uh, I've, not been, I've never been a researcher in my life. I, from the very beginning, although I'm trained as a clinical biochemist, uh, of a first job in IMR, but I turned that down later on. Not, not become a clinical biochemist, but went into the outside of the world and doing intellectual property, which being on a legal matter, and then uh, becoming a patent agent and trademark agent and so on, and working with people on how to make an invention and then how to commercialize invention. Now, first thing is that the, from our experience is that um, when we talk about commercialization, we have, first thing is that whether there's a market need for that, that particular R&D work or not. Uh, if you are looking at uh, invention, a uh, question people ask is that what's the difference between invention and innovation? Invention is something new which has not been done by anybody before. Something that is you don't see today. You know, in the old days, you don't have a handphone, or what you call this, uh, your mobile phone. Now we have a mobile phone. Okay. In the old days, you didn't have a microphone. Now we have a microphone. Okay. So this is our invention. But on the other hand, what is innovation? Innovation is something where we look at what the industry wants from us, what the industry requires from you, so that from there they ask you, okay, I need something A, B, C, so they do the thing for them. Good example, when you go to the hospital now every time, first thing I walk into the hospital, what they do is that the nurse will click your ear, click here, and get blood from you, or click here, and you start screaming, I don't like to be pricked. Is there any better way of testing a patient for certain thing rather than picking him or her with a needle? Now, the other thing is, that, for example, in estate, we know that uh, people working in estate have to go for a checkup every one week or once a month, taking their blood sample to see whether they have any poisoning. Which basically, you know, these people in estate, they, have, they put in a lot of herbicide, fungicide, and so on, so they have this poisoning. And again, they'll take blood from them. So, is there another better way? And somebody came up with invention that. Well, instead of taking blood from the poor fellow every month, you know, and making him so pale when he looks sickly, uh, we take his saliva, okay? Just put some water, 5 ml water, put your mouth down and pour out water again, and then you test the amount of 
the enzyme as some call it asterisk, which will then indicate whether are you suffering or having this one called pesticide or fungicide poisoning. And that would be a very good invention because there are so many people wanting that invention to test, to, to make a compliance of